Good morning, everybody. We're recording. Okay. <laughs> it's really good to go back during the week and okay. review it. All right. How do you do that? <laughs> no, 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 we're not going to get into too much Zoom. There's a little button at the bottom of the person who's hosting the meeting. It says record. Uh -huh. It says record. No, I mean, how do I go? How do I go back during the week? Oh, I'll have to send a link to you, folks, of where the recording is. Ah, okay. Because I can't mail it. I can't mail it to you. It's a couple of gigabytes long. So. Can we record on our own? Is there a record there? If there's a record on your screen, you can. But it says, please request recording permissions from the meeting host. There you go. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you get that. I haven't well, you're message. the host. I know, but I haven't got a, a, a record request from anybody I that I see. Well, my recording button is flashing red. That means you're doing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, must, that must mean I'm recording. So be careful what you say. <laughs> All right. Um, as, as you got in my, saw in my email, I sent, uh, I think it was last evening, today's focus is going to be on, on email. But we'll be covering other subjects as questions develop as we go. But what I'd like to do is just start out with a little prompt. Uh, a little starter about uh, email. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with you and just go through a presentation here about, in general, what is email and we'll get down to actually how to use an email. So I'm going to mute everybody. And if you want to speak, if you want to speak, you have to unmute yourself and then mute yourself again when you've asked okay. your question, et cetera. I also have a chat screen up. So if you want to ask a question, you can click chat on the bottom of your screens or top, depending on where chat is located. It might be under three buttons on the iPad. I'm not sure. I don't have a picture of the iPad up. And you just click chat and then you send a message and I'll see it on my screen. Okay. Mm Is that anybody? Okay, so everybody see working with email on your iPad and iPhone? Yes. Yes. Right, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think you muted everybody. Yeah. Yeah, we have bugs. I don't think you muted anybody. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, they do it too. But I like bugs because they most of the people got shot. So, are you playing? Mute us. Mute us. I will. I will. <laughs> Gotta get the right screen up here. <laughs> <laughs> you got, got too many people talking? Is that what you're Yes. <laughs> yes. I want to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. I just have to arrange my screens. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bill, you, you, muted you gotta yourself. mute yourself, Bill. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. I assume everybody can see working with email on your iPhone, iPad. Yes. Yes. But you're not muted, huh? <laughs> okay. What we're going to try to cover yeah, briefly in about 40 minutes or so is email providers, how an email is processed, setting up an account. Now, you may say, well, I just get my email, but we'll talk about how that happens. Setting up an account, using your iPhone or iPad to do email, and then working with email, such as setting up an account, inbox, replies, forwarding, saving, deleting, saving a picture, creating a new email, adding a picture to that, and sending it to multiple people, What's drafts all about? Trash, spam, creating additional mailboxes. Okay, so let me get started with all of that, right? First of all, we have many email providers. Ooh, that didn't come out of the Right, we have Gmail, you have Yahoo. They should come out opposite each other. <laughs> we have AOL, you have Verizon. And these are email providers. They're the people that you pay a fee to every month. I'm sorry, there are, pe there are people that's providing you an email. In many cases, it may be uh, a, a Comcast. So you may have a Comcast account. Gmail, you don't need to provide, pay. Yahoo, you don't need to pay. AOL, if you're paying for AOL, I recommend you get a different account. Okay, there's Comcast. And also many of us have an account that may be a private, you know, maybe at uh, BillCrow.net or something. We have one in Stug, right, et cetera. And, and schools have accounts. Where do you process your email? Okay, you get email, and the way what happens is it goes to um, you send it. Let's say you're sending it to me, and you're on Comcast. So Comcast is the server that handles your email. Comcast gets the email, put says, "Is it for Comcast?" says, no, it's not for me, it's for Bill Crow, and he's in Gmail. And so they put it out on the internet, right? It gets out there and runs around and finds the Gmail service provider or Gmail host, 
and it stops there and gets stored at that host. Okay, so you can go to that host from any computer in the world. You know, you can open the browser and then go to the email provider service address, such as gmail.com, comcast.com, yahoo.com, on another person's machine, enter your um, email ad address and password, and all of a sudden, there's your email. And you're looking at that email at on the internet at the service provider. You can also have an email application on your device. Many of us have that. Windows has one called Windows Mail. There's mail on your Apple device. You can put Outlook on a computer or your iPhone or iPad. You can put Firefox on your, on your computer, iPhone or iPad. And these are all applications that handle your mail on your device. For that application to work, you have to add an account to it. So you would add, for example, I would go to Apple Mail and add my Gmail address to it so that when I open Apple Mail, it would bring up, it would bring up my, uh, my Gmail because I entered, when I set up the account, I said my address is blah, da da and my password is whatever my password is for my Gmail, and that application remembers my password, and I don't have to enter it anymore. AOL has some, okay? They have applications. AOL has an application, Gmail, Yahoo, all have applications that will run on our iPhones and iPads. Personally, I want to use the Apple application on my device because it connects to so many other things. For example, it connects to my pictures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. My PowerPoint just stopped working. This is kind of visual representative of what I was talking about. You're the sender of an email. This could, this uh, object on the left represents your computer, your iPhone, or your iPad. When you send it, it goes to, in my case, for example, it would go to the Gmail server, then it goes out on the internet, ends up at whatever server I'm sending it to, for example, if I were sending it to somebody on Comcast, this would be their server. That server has a post office box for you and puts your mail into it. And then I can go to my PC and either go up to the server and get my mail, or I can use an application on my PC to get, a, get an email. And it would go up here and get it. And I could view it, work with it.
This is the same representation. Okay. When you're processing your mail, the email providers have two types of services they provide to you. And it's a service of how your email is handled. One is called POP03, okay? What happens in a POP03 is that the email is sent to the server like normal and it sits on the server. And it was designed in the 90s for people who only had one device, one computer. And that computer would go and get that email with an application. It would go and, and read it down to the computer, and then it would remove it from the computer. Now there is an option there to keep it at the at the server. But in most cases, people were getting it, it would come off the server and you would have it on your laptop or work computer or home computer. And I say, or, because if you have two computers today and your laptop goes and gets it, when your work computer goes and tries to get it, it will no longer be there because the laptop got it and removed it. By the way, POPOS 3 stands for Post Office Protocol. And it's handled like a letter. If you get it from the post office, it's no longer at the post office. There are some advantages to it. All email are downloaded to your computer. You can read your emails without being logged in on the internet. Right? Opening attachments is easy and quick because they're already on your computer. It frees up storage space on your mail server so you don't run out. Some of us have had that issue, for example, Yahoo, and you've not deleted anything from the server, right? The disadvantages is opening an attachment is easy and quick, sometimes a bit too easy and quick if the attachment has a virus in it. Email does not synchronize across devices, and to me, that's the major issue. The email, you download it, and it doesn't, and, and then let's say there's an option in POP03 that you can download and it will remove it from the server or download and it'll keep it at the server. If you download and keep it at the server and then delete it from your computer, it's still on the server. And you can get to it from a different computer. Now, some people find that an advantage, right? Inboxes on different devices with the same account will not be the same, okay? So you could have one inbox with 20 emails in it and another one with 40. And you have one computer that got an email and another one that did not. Okay. The other type of application is called internet protocol. Internet message access protocol is what it stands for. IMAP does not remove the messages from the server to your computer. Instead, it synchronizes. So when you download a message and you process it on your computer, you delete it, 
the application on your device sends back up a message to the server saying, delete that message, right? So all, so everything is synchronized. And so when this computer comes on, it doesn't get that message, but it gets all the messages that were left on this computer and this one. And they're continually updating the server so that all your devices are synchronized. You can access your, your data anywhere. It only downloads the message when you click. So it does save space and saves you getting into trouble. The disadvantage there is when you click on and get an email, it may show you the email, but it doesn't show you the attachment right away because it's going and getting that attachment from the server. Okay, let's switch over to the iPhone and iPad now. On the iPad, you can set up an account. And the way you do that is you go to settings on your account. You go to settings and then accounts and passwords. And I've, I've given you a diagram of that here. And you'll see a list of the most frequently used uh, email providers. For example, if you're setting up one at Google, you would click on Google and it would come up and say, fill in your email address, followed by, it would ask for your email password. And then it would set it up and make sure it would verify and then make sure you save it. If you chose other, for example, if you had Comcast or a private uh, owner, you would click other, then you would click on add email account, and then you would put in your name, email address, and password, and click, whatever that word is there, let's say next, or join, or whatever. You would click the upper right-hand corner there, <clears throat> and it would verify and say, yep, it's a valid address, and you would save that one. And once you get an email account, it would, it would show up in this list. So we didn't add another account. Here's one that says William T. Crow at Verizon.net. That is my email address. And that's an account I have on here. There are several other ones here. So you could add multiple accounts. <clears throat> So I have my, the Verizon account here. There it says William Crow at gmail.com. And many of the email providers not only give you a mail capability, they give you contacts and calendar and even notes capability so that your contacts are on the server and synchronized across your devices. Your calendar is on the server and synchronized across devices. <clears throat> and you can access those things with the calendar app from Apple, the contacts app from calendar, Apple, and the notes app from calendar. And there's my mail. I hope you're all shaking your head because I, I can't see the faces on, with this particular setup. Okay, let's look at some email using Apple's mail application. You have many mailboxes, right? You have the inbox where most of your mail goes. And the reason I say most is because some of you have a, a junk or spam folder or mailbox and your mail application may filter out some of the email you're getting and put it in your junk mail. And you have an inbox for each account. 
and in using the Microsoft Mail account, you have one inbox for all accounts. So you can look at that one and it would fold together <clears throat> the email you're getting from various email providers. You have an email, you have an inbox or a box, a mailbox called drafts. There are emails you started but did not send or delete. And you can refer back to it and continue working on that email and eventually send it. There's some of our email providers call their junk mail spam or some of the spam call it junk. <clears throat> you should be checking that particular box frequently to see if some of the mail your email provider put in there got there by mistake. <clears throat> And trash is where your mail goes when you delete it. And in many of our cases, <clears throat> it stays there until we delete it from trash. In some of our cases, there's a time stamp on it and it will delete it in a particular amount of time, like 30 days or 15 days, et cetera. <clears throat> there's a send box. Some of, I've seen some people send their self an email so they have a copy of it. Um, if it's in your sent mail, it has been sent. So there's a copy of all the emails you've sent in your sent mail. So there's, I, I don't believe there's a need to, to um, copy yourself on an email you're sending because it goes into the sent mail folder or mailbox. And then there's a bunch of mailboxes you can create for mail you would like to save that's in your inbox. Some people don't like to do that. They like to leave everything in their inbox. And that can get into a problem after a while. <clears throat> OK. What I'd like to do now is have everybody switch over and um, let me pull up my correct screen now. Bill? Yes. Could you, could you explain mailboxes that you can create and, and yeah. why would you create it and what are they for? I will do that. I would love to do that. I, that's probably next. <laughs> I just have to come up with a couple other screens here just make sure we've got everybody. Okay, we're looking at my iPad mail. We don't see it. You will in a sec. Hold on. <laughs> now, see it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me do something different. Hold on.
All right. You see at the top, if you, and by the way, if you have an iPhone, you could be looking at your mail. <clears throat> okay. An actual email, because it only has space for not just the mailbox on the iPad, you have space for the mailboxes and the message. On the iPhone, it's one or the other. You have to hit the back arrow at the top to get back to your mail. <clears throat> okay. So it says here I have six emails. Right. Let me. Uh, That's not the screen we're seeing. What are you seeing? We're seeing the participants oh. in your group chat. Don't need that, do we? Thank you. Somebody tell me if you're seeing the right screen now. We're seeing mailboxes, yes. Thank you. Okay. So there's all my messages. By the way, at the top, it says mailboxes now, top left. If I tap that, I see all the mailboxes I have. And it says all inboxes. And then there's a VIP, iCloud, Hotmail. And down here it says Google. So I would tap one of those to open up the mailboxes that I have in Google. I'm sorry, I see the messages I have in Google. If I scroll clear down, you'll see that I have all these different email accounts. And I'm sorry it's so complicated, but that's okay. <laughs> you would only have one or two there perhaps. And if I tap on one of those, for example, if I tap on the one that says William T. Crow at G at the bottom there, it will show me all the different sub mailboxes that I have. Now, Ann just asked me a question. She said, well, Bill, how do I add additional mailboxes there? All right, I would go to, I would go to edit, and the word new mailbox sits at the top bottom. Now, if you have an email provider that allows you to do this, this will work. I think it's either AOL or Yahoo doesn't allow that, or it didn't some time ago. I would tap new mailbox, and it would say I want to make one called uh, Stug. Stug meetings. And it says, where do you want to put that mailbox? The second portion there, location. And you would tap it, and I would put it as a sub mailbox on one of these other ones. Okay? And it lists all the mailboxes. So let's go down here, and I want to put it under Stug. So I'm going to put Stug. <laughs> I didn't spell Stug right, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Stung, huh? Okay, so I'm going to create a, a mailbox called Stug Meetings as a sub mailbox to Stug and click save. Now, hopefully, I can go down here. To Stug, where's Stug? I'm in Stug right now. There's Stug. In alphabetic order, it should be down here somewhere. There it is. See where it says Stug Meetings? I tap Done. Okay. Is a mailbox the same as a folder in this instance? Very good analogy. <laughs> Did you hear that? It is the same as a folder exactly. 
In fact, they look like folders, don't they? So, Bill, you're you're talking about saving mail that you've already read. Yes. Okay. Instead of leaving it in your inbox, you want to save it somewhere. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If you're a good email user, you shouldn't have anything more than a hundred emails in your inbox, both read and unread. Okay. Bill? Yes. Uh, I had a question. When, when you typed in the misspelling, I mean, when you typed in stud a while ago, you, it switched to a different word because that's not in your dictionary. Do you know how to add words to the dictionary on the phone? Oh, can we save that for when we're... <laughs> okay. <No. okay. laughs> that's an interesting one. Didn't find well, it. I know how to do it on the Mac. But I don't know how to do it on the phone. Yeah, I got you. I'm not sure you can, Greg. <laughs> okay. Everybody okay in creating mailboxes? I'd like everybody to try it. If you have your device, go ahead and tap, and you're looking at all inboxes, or you're looking at mailboxes there. Tap edit, and tap new mailbox. Are we in settings first? No, no, you're, you're at your email. You see where I'm tapping? I'm tapping, oh, I'll get my mouse. Apple right. email, Apple email. That's no. correct, that's yeah. correct, Apple email. And you tap edit up here. Then scroll and then click new mailbox at the bottom. And you type in <laughs> Stug meeting. Oops. So once you type that in, it says you want to create a new mailbox location to put it in or find one. Then you would scroll through the different, <coughs> excuse me, folders that you have. They call them mailboxes. <coughs> and you pick the one you want it to be a sub Mailbox Bill, why folder. wouldn't it automatically go in and be a, a new folder or it a is, mailbox? It is a new folder or mailbox, but you're going to have to push but you're it. Calling it. You're calling it a sub-mailbox. And, and where you're going to put it is a sub-mailbox. Is a, is a mailbox you're going to put? See where it says mailbox location? Yes. You click the arrow there and you select the folder you want to put it in. So it's a, it is a subfolder to it. Okay. Did I word that better? I think I did. <laughs> okay. okay. You all right? Thank you. I'm all right. <laughs> all right. Bill, at the bottom of mine, it did not say new mailbox. And are you using Apple Mail first? Did you click on the Apple? Are you using the mail application from Apple? Uh, how will I know that for sure? Well, how did you get to your mailbox? It says inbox. No, no. How did you get to your mail? What, what application did you click on to get to mail? Let me show you what I mean. Good question. Let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> I clicked on this blue background envelope, white envelope. 
So did I. Okay. And what did you, um, when you click edit, does it say mailboxes on the left? Are you on your iPad or iPhone? And I'm on the iPad and it does have, I'm with you. It says mailboxes, all inboxes. And then you click edit at the top. Okay, now I'm with you. Does it say new mailbox at the bottom now? No. Y yes, yes, I see it. Okay, good. I've got two questions, Bill. Go for it, Bill. Uh, First of all, in creating these uh, sub mailboxes or folders, they're going to be specific to whichever uh, mail application I'm actually using for my email servers, because it looks like I, I have uh, up in the Boston area, Verizon sold all their email to AOL. So I get all my Verizon mail on AOL. Yeah. But I also have a Gmail and I have a a proprietary one through my college. So I, I have a groups of them, but when I create a new mailbox, it looks like in location, it'll allow me to put it into one of those uh, email servers so that if I'm, uh, so I can create one. It allowed me to put one in AOL under, they have a save category and I could do a subfolder there or with like Gmail, I could just create a regular folder. Uh, so the question is, are these, if you have <coughs> multiple emails, are these going to create subfolders in each email system that you're working with? No. But you can put one in, looks like you can put one, no. It just puts it in the particular server you're choosing to put it under. Right. So in, um, it, so, but like if I put it in Gmail, it'll, it'll stay within the Gmail server. If I go on to another device and go to that Gmail server, will I see that sub email box? Yes, you will. Yes. Yes. But if I go into, can I be reading AOL and save something in Gmail or vice versa? Yes. <laughs> you really want to get complicated. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always try difficult things. That's <laughs> this question is, could I, if I have two email accounts and I'm looking at an email on one account, can I save it in a folder after I've processed it or read it? Can I save it in a folder on the other account? And yeah, you can do that. <laughs> This does not, this does not, these mails do not automatically go into these accounts until you put them there. Is that right? Okay. All you're doing is creating a, a place to put the mail at this point. Okay. So if I'm looking at a piece of mail here, let me bring up my, uh, so I'm looking at a piece of mail from popular science here and I want to store it somewhere, I click the folder up here. And now I can put it, well, maybe I, Bill, maybe I misspoke. I'm seeing if I can get it to another provider's email. No, Bill, it looks like it, you can only put it in the email. The ser the only, you can only put it in the server you're looking at. There's a different way to do what I was talking about. But, so, Bill, I'm sorry. You probably need to email that email that you want to save in a different server under that server's. Exactly. 
and then save it on that what that uh, server. Uh, but I don't get. I can't view the email on that. I'm looking at my email from a different account. For example, AOL. You can do it if you've merged your accounts, different right. accounts together, and they all come into the same email. That would allow. Well, that's what I'm. Uh, yes, whatever inbox you're looking at. Whatever inbox it came from is the one, whatever server inbox it came from is the one you got to put it back into. That server. Let's not get too complicated here. <laughs> I, I've also discovered that if I, AOL will allow me to create a folder and Gmail will allow me to create a folder, but my RPI college inbox will not allow me to create a folder. Exactly. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. I take it back. I've got this one. I want to save it, so I go to file. And I'm looking at the Gmail folder here at the top the Gmail servers, if I click the back arrow, I can go to AOL and put it in one of the folders in AOL. So there is a way to do it. That's far more complicated than most of these folks want to get, I think. Bill, what's the advantage of having all these multiple email accounts? Um, I use one for everybody that wants to get your email account when you're out in the world. Because the only thing that results in is you getting a lot of spam. Yes. One's, okay. one's for garbage mail. Okay. Uh, one's for, for me, my personal, what I want to do. Some people have some for business. The reason I have all of them is because I teach this. And somebody says, I have an AOL account. Why, why doesn't it do this? So I can bring up an AOL account and, and experiment with it. Oh, I see. Okay. Because it help you, helps you help them. It helps me help them. Okay. <clears throat> Most people have two. I know my wife finally figured that out when she said, how come I'm getting all this spam? I said, you keep giving people your email address when you're out in the world or you're, you're logging into something or they always want that email. And then they sell it. And you start getting garbage mail. And that's how that happens. Okay, everybody okay with, well, if you have a question, go ahead and turn on your mic and ask. If not, I'm going to move on beyond just looking at your mail and saving it. The little blue dot indicates that, right? that you've read it and the number that's on the mailbox, you'll notice it says five here. That's the number of unread emails I have in my inboxes. And if I scroll down here to Verizon, it says I have one in Verizon and four in Gmail for a total of five up here. Now, one other thing here, if I'm looking at my mailboxes and I click edit, you'll notice I get this screen that comes up with all these check marks on it. Okay. All inboxes combines the inbox for iCloud, Hotmail, AOL, that one, Outlook, the other, the William Crow Verizon, and Yahoo. It combines them all and puts them in all inboxes. So I could turn this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one off. So let me do that. Boom, boom, boom.
All right. Oops. There's one for all trash, so it combines all the trash. And there's one for all drafts. I kept that on. I think I'll turn on all sent. So I can go there and see all the mail that I have sent from any one of the accounts. Then there's a couple of special ones here I'd like to reference as, since we're here. It's called VIP. Yeah, what's that? VIP is a feature that allows you to have a special sort going on in your incoming mail so that mail from particular places or individuals goes into the VIP folder. So if I, uh, I just turned off, I just turned off the edit. And if I go to I, it says, if I get any mail from Patty Crow, it's going to go into the VIP folder. And so I could add additional folks to that. I can say if I get any mail from from Ann Ross, <laughs> right? It would go into the VIP folder, and I wouldn't need to go into my inbox to find them. I just go right to the VIP folder. But then you would have to go every time to look and see if there was something in your VIP folder. Well, it would actually come up here and have a number next to it. So you'd know it's, it's something in there. But you're right, you'd have to be looking at your mailboxes to see that. And there is one from Ann Ross. How about that? <laughs> And if I click the I, and then click on N, I think, I think I can remove her from the VIP somehow. You may have to go up to edit. No, no, all I need to do is pull it to the left. I'm not sure I can do it with this thing, but let's see. Ah. Now I have to do it with my finger. But you drag to the left and then I can remove hand marks. Okay. Now some people achieve that same feature because they have a lot of inboxes. So if I go to all my inboxes, some people achieve that same thing by pulling down and a little search bar comes up and I can type in I can type in right keyboard A Ann Ross and there I've got the email from Ann same one so you can achieve seeing mail from special places by getting this search box at the top. How did you do that again? I, I brought up, I have now, I'm looking at the folder, all inboxes, yeah, it says okay. all inboxes. And I put my finger on the screen and drag down. Oops, no, no I didn't want to do it that way. <laughs> Hold on. Sometimes my mouse doesn't work the same as a finger. Put your finger on and pull down, slide down, and you'll see a search bar come up. What is, what is your finger touching? I couldn't see it on the screen. Right there. The, uh, okay, between the search and the very first item. Yeah, anywhere, actually anywhere on the screen and pull down without, without oh, okay. Okay. On that left hand column. Got it. All right. Thank you. Did it work? 
I, I don't have my phone right now. I was just watching the screen. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So now I've got this piece of email. Right. And I got this wonderful picture of these pigs, right? <laughs> Dangerous various brewing in pigs. <laughs> so I've got a picture in that email and I wanted to save that picture. So I put my finger on the picture and I hold down and it comes up and says, add to photos. And now I've saved the picture. I see a lot of folks who say, I don't want to lose my pictures. That's why I have all those emails in there. This is a way to save the picture. And then you can delete the email. You no longer need it. Okay. So far, so good. Would you go over no. that one more time? I sure will. I got an email. I got one here from Popular Science. And I got a picture here. It looks like, what is it, Venus? Picture of the surface of Venus, right? I, I make it so the picture isn't, and then I press and hold the picture. Just put your finger on the picture and press and hold it. And it says, add photo, add, add to photos. And you just click on that. And now that picture of Venus is in my photos. On on your uh, on your computer. On your iPad or iPhone. The picture is not in your computer. It's on your iPad or iPhone. It's in your email, and it's in. Then it ends up in your e your iPhone or iPads photos which in turn, if you have the iCloud turns on, it would show up in the iCloud.com on your computer. Or in Greg's case, it will actually show up on his computer because he has a Mac. The same thing can occur on a PC, but it's a little more complicated. To get to your pictures on the computer, you go to iCloud, you go to a browser and go to iCloud.com and sign into your Apple iCloud account, which is your Apple ID and Apple password. All right, so that's the way you would save a picture and then be able to access it on your computer. Before I go any further, Peter sent and asked me a question on who handles your contacts with each server. You have, if you have contact, you could have multiple groups of contacts. You could have one on Comcast, one on Yahoo, one on Gmail and one on Comcast, if they all support having contacts. So Peter, if you have more questions on that, we can talk about that when we get to contacts, you can send me a little note, okay? Now, I wanna, I don't wanna do extra work, I wanna forward this great article, this great email to someone. We have the arrow at the bottom, You click it and it comes up and said, what do you want to do with this thing? For the lack of a better term, we'll call that little arrow, the share arrow. And you want to share it with someone. And so you could forward it. And I can forward it to, <laughs> I'm picking on Ann today. Ann R-O-S-S, -S. right? And that pops her name and for my contacts, I click on that. And then I would just click the little arrow here on the left to send it. 
if I wanted to send it to multiple people, I would click and I would say forward, and I would just start typing in names up here. Uh, there's Peter Schneider. And uh, let's call it uh, Oops. There's my wife. And I would add names. And then click send. I would delete that. There is an application on your devices that you can get on your devices called MailShot Pro. And I understand from Greg that you can um, set up distribution lists. You will be able to set up distribution lists with one of the new iOSs or OSs that is coming out. It's not yet available. So I use an application called MailShot. And it, it costs like, I think less than $5. You can get the non-pro version, but it's limited to the number of distribution lists you can create and the number of um, uh, people you want to send it to in each distribution list. So I've got the pro version. I tap it, and it comes up, and it's relatively easy to use. I have two of them. I have one called the 2020 Stug Board which allows me to send an email to the stud board by just typing in 2020 and all 11 people on the board show up. Okay, if I want to create a new one, it's relatively easy. I would name it, I'm naming it test, and then it says I want to add contacts, and here's my distribution list. I just start adding people. Oh, she didn't have an email address. I wish this was more comfortable. It's re being recorded. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> okay. And so you continue adding uh, different people, etc. And when you're done, you tap update. And now I have a, a distribution list called test. And if I go back to my mail and I start a new email and I just type in T-E-S-T, -E I'm not sure I got it yet. I have to, didn't pick it up yet, but it would. I have to exit mail and come back. All right, I'm not going to. So if you want to write an email instead of forwarding one, by the way, if you forward this, you can put your note on it, right? You can add information. And then hit the up arrow. and send it. Yeah, you, go ahead. Um, at this point, I, would it be good for you to point out that when we forward an email, we should be responsible ah, to good leave point. all the PV yeah. people that it was sent to previously? Yeah, I will I'll cover that. Okay. I, I want to make a point here. See where it says delete draft or save? We talked about drafts. If I save the draft, I can go back to the drafts folder. Okay. 
and here's the one I was going to send and didn't. So when I click cancel, it gives me the choice to either make it a draft or get rid of it. And then if I wanted to get rid of it here, come on, can't do it with the mouse. I can trash it. Now, the point that was made here, if you're getting an email from, uh, many of us get the jokes, et cetera, et cetera, from many people. Got a good one down here from Cheryl End. Okay. And but she's very good about it. See how she cleaned everything up? There's no distribution list on it. But if I wanted to forward it to you, and forward, you see how it says this is from right down here in, the, in blue, see at the bottom there? That information should be removed. And the way you can do that is you can put your finger on the screen and select the first word. Okay, let me do that again. I attached, I tapped the word from. And it says select or select all, I would say select. And then I would move the little balloon. See the little balloon here, or popsicle upside down in here. And I would move that to cover up all the things that I want to remove. And then I would tap the screen and it says cut. Okay, so it's just very good etiquette, number one, to remove all those names before you forward those messages, jokes, whatever. <clears throat> and secondly, that whole distribution list ends up in whatever people you're sending it to. And that's another way you get junk mail because somebody finally gets a hold of that and there's 300 names in there and they're able to sell that and make money on it. Bill, I have a comment. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've talked about it before in other sessions, but uh, that just that last demonstration you did pointed out some of the cursor improvements they, they've made on the iPad since mm -hmm. they've added the mouse and so forth where the cursor, particularly when you selected that word from and uh, that the cursor grabbed the little extension bar at the end, the little drumstick, upside down drumstick, Hold on. it's much easier to, to grab that and drag it than it used to be. Yes. What he's saying is when, it's much easier to drag that little popsicle stick than it used to be. And it really is nice when you have the mouse because it turns into a little bubble. <laughs> okay. But yeah, they have made that much easier to do. I just did it with my finger. I have a question. I oh, tried, tried to send a photograph at 4th of July time and I had 32 people on my list that I typed in individually. It wasn't a group, particular group, and none of those people received that photo. And that was on my iPhone. Was it in your sent mail? Yes. Did any of them check their uh, spam folders? I don't know about that. I just know that no one responded out of 32 people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the people I did ask individually said they didn't receive it. So <clears throat> is, there, is there a maximum to the number of people that could be on a... Uh, Not that I know of, but some internet providers put that stuff in their spam mail when it's from more than to more than 10 or 20 people. Oh. <clears throat> and how come on my, um, how come I don't, I never, I never get any spam. How come, is there, should I be? You should have a spam folder. You don't have a spam folder? No. I'm on Comcast, Comcast and Apple. Are you sure? 
if you go back to mailboxes and click edit, is there a... It's called junk instead of spam. It could be, it could be junk. Yeah, I, have, I have junk, yeah. I have. It's the same thing. Yeah, junk would be the alternate name for it. Okay, junk is the same as... Spam. Yep. Good one. Good one. <laughs> yeah, I've learned you have to be real careful how you word the heading when you send to a larger group and you can send up to 99. Uh, what, what, what's the careful wording? Yeah, what do you say? Well, it just has to... It, it can't sound like a commercial thing. It, it has to be more personal in some ways. Because um, sometimes I've had trouble sending large group emails to a group that I communicate for with on a volunteer basis. Um, and people have said they found it in their spam or they didn't get it. So it, it's usually the heading that puts it there into spam. Okay, what do you have to be, you don't know what you have to be careful of? No, I'm still experimenting with okay. it. Um, Good one though, if that's, if that's the case. It's usually the number of people you're sending it to. <clears throat> yeah, but I, at least with Gmail, I can send to 99 people. Right, right. But some, see, it's not you that put it, putting it in spam. It's the service provider in the other end. Right. So you're sending it to somebody in Comcast, and, and they say, oh, <laughs> we don't, we don't, we put the, all those in spam or junk mail. But you can also put an email into junk and ultimately the server recognizes it automatically, see, correct? Does everybody hear that suggestion? That's a good one. For example, let me go to my inbox. And here I got uh, my popular science thing, right? And I want to put that in spam from now on. I would click the folder up here and say, put it in junk. Right. And then after that, ultimately, <laughs> the server would say, you want things from popular science to go into your junk mail. And it does. Well, it should. <laughs> not, all, not all servers quite work that way. So sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> what are you going to do? Just a minute, I got to respond to this. I lost the connection during the class and can't get back in. Glad you're recording it. <laughs> oh, it's too bad. Okay. If the other thing, if you have a group you regularly communicate with, if they put your name in their address book, then it won't go into spam. That's a good idea as well. That might be a good cure to that. So if it's from you, even though it has 99 names on it, it would go, it would come in. All right. Let me check something here. How can you, okay, let's create an email now. And I wanna send it to, I'm gonna send it to Peter. Peter Dobbs, are you on? Are you on? Yes? You may not have heard me. I am, Bill. I just unmuted myself. Okay. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. Yep. I'm going to say, wonderful picture. Okay. 
right? And I click in the body of the text. And I see where the cursor is right now, everyone. Blinking. I put my finger and hold it there. And it comes up with a bunch of options. And it should say insert photo or video. You could tap the arrow if you don't, don't if it doesn't show and it might be on the extended menu versus the primary one that comes up. And mine says insert video or photo. I go there and I say, I want to send him a picture of, oh, my Thomas the Train set that I'm selling. <laughs> so I tap it. And now I've got my Thomas the Train set. And I go hit the arrow and it sends. Okay, now he can get that picture and save it. <laughs> and make me an offer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's uh, let's switch over and do some questions and answers. Anybody have any questions? Let me uh, get out of. Bill. Yep. Go ahead. This is Sally. Go ahead. Um, how do I delete from? I mean, I know how to delete from iPhone and iPad, but it doesn't delete on my MacBook. Is there a settings that I need to work on? So you're telling me your, uh, uh, what's your email? Who's your service provider for your email? Um, Gmail. And, um, you're telling me when you delete it from your, com your iPhone, Right. Does it it also deletes from my iPad, no problem, but it does not delete from my MacBook. Okay. Your Mac, oh boy. Your MacBook might be treating it as a Pop 03 instead of a um, iMap. I would, I would try and, and Greg might be able to help me with this, but you can you, you might be able to delete the account from your Mac and re-add it, and it may start working correctly. Delete, I'm sorry, delete what? Delete? Delete the Gmail account from your Mac, and then, from add, Mac. It, and then okay. add it, and then add it back in again. And add back in again. And make sure okay. you, if it comes up and says POP03, you say, no, I want it as an IMAP. Okay. Okay. Got so, it. So that's, that's one. And you said it was Gmail, right? Right. Yeah. How long ago was it set up on your map? Oh, my God. That, I don't okay. know, 100 years ago. Yeah. Try, try that. And that may, that may take you. Because I had my Mac before I had my iPad and my, and my iPhone. Yeah. Another, another thing is I had a question here on Gmail about uh, why don't I have the same number of emails in my inbox on red on my Mac or my PC as I have on my uh, iPhone and iPad. And the answer is if you are going to the server with Gmail, and what I have to do, hmm. let me try to explain it. If you go to the server on Gmail by going to gmail.com and entering your uh, Gmail account name and password, and then you go into the settings and look at your, um, what do they call it? It's your folders, okay? I think they call it, may call it labels or something like that. You'll see that Gmail automatically filters things into three categories unless you change it. Okay. Um, okay. They, they, they sort it into social, um, something like advertisers and personal. Right. 
And if they've done that, then you're going to see less in your personal, on your PC or Mac than you would on your iPhone or iPad because the iPhone or iPad doesn't do the filter. It shows you everything. And so I've had folks who had that issue and they go into their Mac and you just say, hey, I don't want to get a special filter by just unchecking those particular options. Okay. Now, sometimes you'll be one or two off and I don't have an explanation for that one. Bill? Yes. I know there's a setting on the Mac when you go into mail on, on the general tab. If you go into mail and then do the preferences in the general tab, you have the choice for for that to be either uh, IMAP or POPO3? No, I'm, I'm talking about counting the number of messages. Okay. And now I just lost it here. Uh, <laughs> okay. The, the thing is that the, the item is doc unread count. Yes. And, and your choice is inbox only or all mailboxes. So if okay. you had some, an unread mailbox, I mean an unread email that went directly to your junk folder, yep. it would make a difference whether that's counted or not. Yep. yep. Or, or if you're also, if you have rules set up where you're all, selecting the folder that the new email goes into automatically that would change it too i agree that happens when you're using the mac mail program is that correct yes yeah is okay. that what you're using sally or do you are you using gmail directly out of Safari? i use gmail and everything no no i know you use g do you use the gmail app mm, no you, i don't Okay, I don't so I think so. You're, 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 I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> you're using the mail app on the iPhone and iPad, the little blue background, or you use the G? Yeah. Okay. Then on the when you get on the your mail on your computer, do you go to the internet? Like you have a Mac or a PC? I have a MacBook. Okay. Do you go, do you use the mail application on your PC or your Mac, or do you go to Safari and then go to your mail? No, I don't do that. I just have my MacBook and my, that used to be all I had. And then I got the iPhone and then I got the iPad. Right. And they're connected. So they, I don't have any trouble with the two iPhones or iPads. It's just my old Mac. Maybe it's just old. I don't know. It is old. <laughs> Well, I think it's I, I think it's because the account's been on there forever, and it's a popo. It's designed as a popo three. Okay, I'll work on that. Yep. Okay. An another thing that I've noticed is if I'm on the mail too long, my IMAP will automatically close, and if it closes, then the counts get off. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bill, you mentioned POP3 and POP03. What's the no, difference? No, it's POP03. It's pop there, I'm sorry. There's no difference. Okay, I'm going down some of the questions if you don't have any more. Sally? Yes? Uh, if you come Wednesday to uh, my work, the Mac workshop, maybe we might get a chance to work on that. All right. <laughs> Good one, Greg. Good one. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for letting me put a plug Thanks, in there. <laughs> well, I have a question. Do, one one thing, Diane, just a minute. Um, Sorry. No, no, you're okay. Um, we do have a class next week if you want to attend. It's, a, it's more of a beginner's class, but we usually add a few things in there that maybe you haven't seen before. So we are having a beginner's class starting next Saturday. Okay, Diane, go ahead. I just said, it has nothing to do with email. Is go ahead. Yeah, we're opening up to anything now. Okay. <clears throat> 
in the last couple of days, and I don't know, I, I, I'm up to date. I haven't updated my uh, operating system or anything. But the last couple of days, when I get a phone call, I send the message that I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. And then I get a message back that it's an invalid number and it's someone in my contacts. This didn't happen before. Hmm. Have you tried just reload, you know, powering down and powering back up? Uh, that's I'll only, try that. I don't remember if I've done that or not. I'll try that. That's the only one I can think of. Doing. When, when things start failing like that, that's what I usually do. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Right. I have a question here is why won't uh, uh, why won't I why can't I pair my Apple Bluetooth earbuds connected to my iPhone? But I can't connect them to my iPad or MacBook. And my best answer to that that I know of is you can only connect your earbuds to one device at a time. So if they're connected to your iPad, for example, you can't add your uh, your phone or your Mac to them. You have to disconnect them by going into your iPad and settings and forget that device and then add it to the other. Call from one nine four one four nine nine three eight four seven. Sorry about that. Bill, that switching between uh, devices with the earbuds is supposed to be improving in iOS 14 oh, and I... Big Sur. <laughs> announced at a dub dub. Nope, oh, okay. One of the questions I had was, how do I get my photos to show up on all my devices, right? The way you do it on all your devices is you have to add them to the iCloud, right? Right. And you go to settings. Your name, iCloud and make sure you have photos turned on, on all your devices. And then if you take a picture or something on one device, it should end up on all the rest of them. Hmm. Oh, I have a good one here. Um, now that I have the, now that there's a trackpad and mouse like you're seeing on your screen right now, right, has been added to the iPad, is it time to consider doing spreadsheets and word processing on the iPad? The first thing I would recommend is you try it. Okay, it's still a little cumbersome, but it's much better with the mouse than it used to be. And there's an ensuing question. If you're going to get a new device and you do very little word processing or spreadsheet development, should you really get a, a computer or should you get a, let's say, an iPad Pro? Pay a little more money, get a much bigger screen, and have a bit, much easier format. I think that's the ultimate objective, and that's where Apple seems to be going now in terms of the support they're putting on the iPad and the iPhone. They have separated out the operating systems of the iPhone and the iPad. Now they still, have, I believe they still have major, most of the same features, but for example, you can't put a mouse on an iPhone. You can put it on the iPad. So features like that and features that take advantage of the larger screen like split screen are appearing more and more on the iPad's operating system. And the ultimate objective there, I think, is to say, gee, you don't need a low-end computer because an iPad will do all the work. 
On mine, I have a keyboard and the mouse, and it really does work very nicely. How would I, Bill, how would I connect a mouse to my iPad Mini 4? Okay, where is that? Trackpad and mouse. Where was that? Where'd you see it? But it was back, go back to general. Oh, was it on there? Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Further down. Yeah. Okay. And that's the controls for it, I thought. There had to be a way to enable. Oh, we had to turn it on. It's a Bluetooth device. So you go to Bluetooth. Uh -huh. And MX Master 3 is what my mouse is. I'm sorry. No, the triathlon. Hmm. 720. Uh -huh. hmm. Okay. Can I use the same mouse that I use for my laptop? No, it has to be a Bluetooth mouse. But many mice come that way. I got one that can act as a Bluetooth or a wireless mouse. Hmm. By just the touch of a button, I can make it go from one, from my iPad to my computer. So in that Thank case, you. all right? Yeah. Question I'm asked is, I'm looking at a new computer or a new iPhone or iPad, and it says, well, let's say a computer, and it says it has a 16 gig memory and 256 gigabyte, um, 16 gigabyte memory and a 30, 256 gigabyte SSD storage. What's the difference? SSD stands for solid state drive or device. Okay, the memory is where the operating system is put when it's working. So that's what the 16 gig is. The operating, when you first turn on, for example, your computer, the memory gets loaded with the operating system, and then that's what takes the time, gets set up, and then it shows you your normal screen when this computer comes up. And it's loading all that information from the used to be called a hard drive or disk drive. SSDs are solid state drives. They don't have any moving parts, but they're memory. And they're a step up from your flash drive because they work faster. And so, go ahead. So, is, so Bill, is 16 gigs enough? For memory? Yes. Yes. 16 gigs is enough for memory. They go as low as, today they go as low as two, but I wouldn't get less than eight. Okay? Mm -hmm. Are you talking about PC or Mac? Um, You're Mac. talking about Mac, yeah. Greg, what's yours got in it? <laughs> you probably have 64 or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you there, Greg? Would you log out? He's probably working on something. Okay. Anyways. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were asking, uh, or some people were asking about the files program on the uh, Apple, uh, Apple phone and, and iPad. And I'd like to save that for an independent subject. Uh, it's not nearly as sophisticated as the files and folder program on your PC or the Mac. And therefore, it's a little, um, let's just put it that way, it's not as sophisticated. Uh, when I, when I uh, answer a call on my Apple Watch, I can't hear it. And I had that problem. Right. And you have to turn the stem, the, the little round thing. 
that sticks out of your phone, you have to, to twirl it to adjust the volume when you okay. get a call. And if you twirl okay. it or twist it, not pull it out, but just twist it, it increases. I had that problem too. And you just, I, I discovered it's, oh, you just need to turn up the volume by twisting it. I think you sweep it away from your, away from you instead of toward you. Okay. Okay. I hope I have explained the difference. You have an Apple ID and password, and then you have email accounts that may have the same Apple ID and password if you have an Apple email account, or you may have a Gmail and that password and account. So I was asked, what's the difference between an email account and an Apple ID? That's not necessarily any difference if you have an Apple uh, account. In other words, you have an account from Apple that's providing you email. Huh. I was asked a question about Zoom. Does Stug ha use a common Zoom login for instructors to host meetings? Or do you have separate accounts for each instructor? We have one account for all the instructors to use to log in and we kind of have to coordinate ourselves to make sure we don't overlap um, <laughs> schedule a meeting at the same time. I got a good question here. How do I take a picture on my iPhone and put it in an email on my laptop? There's no... Um, I guess I would put it in an email. If I took it on my phone, I would put it in email directly on the the uh, the phone or the iPad. You can also, and if you're looking at the screen right now, you can go to your pictures. So if I go to my pictures, here's that picture I just saved from Venus. That one. And in the upper right hand side upper right hand corner of your screen there's the share box so if you're looking at a picture there you can tap the share box right and say mail it now if you wanted to mail it to somebody you didn't happen to have their email address on your device you could send it to yourself and then look at your email on your computer or you could just tap the screen Ooh, you're not seeing what i'm seeing too bad. That's in your share box. <laughs> Pardon me? Yeah, I tapped the share box. When I went there, it didn't come up on your screen. So it's not, it's not showing that. So when I tap the share box, which doesn't show up on your screen, when I tapped it, one of the options that comes up is mail. Yeah, you don't see the share box, you just see the picture. When I tap the share box, I just tapped it. It comes up with this, many things that I can do with it, one of which is mail. You tap mail and then you just send it to the person or yourself that you want to send it to. I was asked a question about if I use Hey Siri frequently to set up reminders. And that's a cool feature because you can use Hey Siri. You can say, Hey Siri, add groceries, add, add carrots to my grocery list or my TBD list. And if you don't have one, it will create one for you and put, you know, paint the, paint the uh, ceiling in the TBD list, if that's what I said to do. But the question was more uh, succinct. Why can't Siri tell me what the reminders are or reminder me at a particular time if that's what I wanted? And it doesn't, doesn't quite do that yet. It does, Alexa does it, but uh, Siri doesn't. Oh. 
let me do something here. What do you see on your screen right now? Somebody Just tell your me. picture. An office. The gallery. Well, gallery. Gallery view? Okay. Yeah. How do I make prints of a photo? It's an interesting question. Okay. And the way you do that is you get an app where you, you can bring up the photo, tap the share box and print it on your computer or your iPad from your computer. I'm sorry, from your iPhone, iPad or computer. And it will select and you can print it there or you can have an app on your device and I, I recommend if you're going to print multiple ones, use a feature like Walgreens or CVS. Uh, get those apps, put them on your devices, and then uh, say, I want to make prints of them. And they have a great process for which you can go through to see them. And I'll show you the app. So there's, there's Walgreens app. Can you see that, everybody? No. Oh, we're still in gallery view. You are? Okay, hold on. I go to the Walgreens application. It comes up and looks like this, right? And I go to uh, photos there at the bottom. And I want to get prints. And those prints are currently not in Facebook and they're not in Walgreens or Dropbox. They're on my device. And I'm going to make some copies of that one. And I say, OK, next. And then I could go through the process here of saying I want uh, six copies of that and choose the size. It tells me how much it's going to cost me to get six copies up there, 204. I go next. And which Walgreens do I want? And it lists them in closest to you order. So I choose that one. I give them my first name, last name, phone number, and email address. And then I push order. I don't give them a credit card. Okay. I push next and order them and it'll tell me they're going to be ready in 25 minutes or 30 minutes. And you go pick them up. I was asked one more question and then I've, I've got, we're, we're, we'll call it saturation for the day. Um, I'm going to stop screen share. Okay, and 
is my picture up there somewhere? Do you see me? No, you don't see me, right? We're in gallery. Okay, there we go. There I am. I want to change my back up. Somebody was asked me, why does my hair seem like it's blowing around? <laughs> right? <laughs> and I've got to, and I've got to uh, change my, uh, my, my background to make the point. So let me go pick one here. Boy, my, my background's too good here. Hold on. Is your pool. That's my pool. Right. Sometimes the back of my chair here starts going all speckly on me. Okay, just a little bit. When it does that, that's because the, the in, in some people's hair starts getting frizzy or looking weird. Um, that's just a, a fact of the background you've chosen and the quality of all the computers between you and where you're sending it. Bill, in the background there, is that a wire going across the back or is that a crime scene tape? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> that, that wire. <laughs> I actually have, you know those, those sparkly lights that you put out yes. at Christmas time to throw out little star beams all over the place? I actually have three of them back there, and that's the wire running between them. So at night, those sparkly things go on the trees, and it looks like I have lightning bugs all over the trees. <laughs> wow. wow. It's a cool little feature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, any other questions out there? Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Have Thank a good day. Have a good Thank weekend. You. Everybody, Thank please you, stay stay healthy out there. I'm going to stop the recording.